In this video, I want to explain what's meant by independently sampling from a distribution, and I want to show that independent sampling can be used to gain insight into a distribution very quickly. So suppose that we have some probability distribution that we'd like to sample from. Let's imagine we have a distribution which looks something like this. So the vertical axis here is the value of the probability density, and the horizontal axis here is some continuous parameter, say theta. The idea with independent sampling is that we might sample one value from this distribution, say that we sample a value of 1.4, and then we draw another sample from that distribution, say we sample the value of theta being equal to 2.3. The idea with independent sampling is that apart from the fact that these two values came from the same distribution, apart from that, they are not connected in any way. Another way of stating this is that if we knew the distribution from which they were drawn, I call that distribution t, if we knew t, then the idea is that the value that we draw out first, here 1.4, cannot be used to predict any better, 2.3, the next value that we draw out. So crucially, if we know the distribution t, all of the joint relation between our 1.4, our first sample that we draw out, and 2.3, our second sample, are contained within that distribution. And because these values don't actually have any joint dependence on one another, apart from the fact they both are being drawn from the distribution t, this means that independently sampling can be a very efficient way of gaining understanding of a distribution. So here it's a very efficient way of learning about our distribution t. Another question that you might have is, well, what do we actually mean to sample from a given distribution? Well, the idea is that actually it's kind of the inverse to the way we think about it. We suppose that there is some process and we don't understand that process very well. And we suppose that this process can output values. So we might run it once and it outputs a value, call it v1, then we run it again and it outputs a different value, v2, etc, etc. And we could do that forever and ever. And what we could do is we could draw a histogram of all of those values that we obtain from our process. So we can think about our process here as being like a factory of different values here. It's manufacturing lots of different values. So if we were to draw a histogram of all of these different values of v, then we might get something like that, which I've drawn here. And the idea is that in the limit that we sample infinite values from our process, our histogram, if we make the bars more and more narrow, then the idea is that it would approach a distribution which is shown by our probability distribution. So actually, it's the sampling distribution, this histogram which defines the probability distribution, not the other way around. So when we say we're sampling from a given distribution, what we really mean is that we're sampling from a given process, which in the limit that we have infinite samples looks something like our distribution that we've drawn here. But we use the shorthand to say we are sampling from a distribution to represent kind of both of these processes. I now want to use some simulations in Mathematica to illustrate further what I mean by using independent sampling to gain insight into a distribution. So imagine that we have an urn, and this urn is very big, perhaps it's infinite in size. And within that urn, there are a collection of balls of different colours. Here we have balls of three colours, green, orange and blue. What we can imagine independent sampling is doing is putting our hand into that urn where the balls are swishing around and picking out one of the balls at random. And the idea here is because the balls are swishing around, the colour that I draw out from that urn on, let's say, one dip into the urn is completely independent of the value that I draw out the next time. It's independent from the first one, apart from their joint dependence on the fact that they're both being drawn from the same underlying distribution. They're both coming out of the same urn. Now, suppose that we don't actually know the numbers of orange, green, and blue balls in our urn, but we want to try and estimate what those relative proportions are. Well, what we can do is we can just sample from our urn. And the samples here shown on the left, we can then draw on the right a histogram of the relative frequencies of each of these balls. And you can see here that as 
I draw more and more samples from my urn using independent sampling, I very quickly get convergence to a distribution, which in the limit here is kind of on the right, the distribution is stopping changing. It's basically converging to the true underlying distribution of ball colours. And note that I've estimated this distribution here without doing any maths at all. All I've done is I've done independent sampling here. And note that we only needed to take relatively few samples here, only 100, to allow a significant insight into what the distribution looks like. It looks like there are roughly twice as many orange balls as there are green, and twice as many green as there are blue. That's all very well for discrete entities, but the question you might ask is, can we use independent sampling to help us to understand a continuous distribution? Well, the answer is yes. Imagine that I've got an urn, but now in that urn, instead of having balls of different colors, I have balls of different sizes. And suppose that I don't know what the relative frequencies of the different sizes are. Well, what I can do is I can still use independent sampling to help me understand from that distribution. And I'm now going to illustrate using some simulations just how quickly independent sampling can help us to understand such a continuous distribution. So now on the left, I can show the different sized balls that I'm drawing out of the urn. And on the right, I'm drawing a histogram of those different values. And also on the right, I'm showing the current running mean of all of the sizes that I actually draw out from my own. And you can see that after I've drawn only relatively few samples from my urn, that the distribution here that we're getting on the right for ball size is actually starting to converge to some sort of distribution. And because of that convergence, we're actually seeing that the mean is stopping changing so frequently as I draw more balls from the urn. So at the beginning, when I've only drawn relatively few balls from the urn, the mean, the running mean, is moving around quite a bit. But then after I've only drawn, say, 40 or 50 balls from the urn, the mean is relatively static. And that's because we're essentially getting convergence to the true mean. And that's just using the law of large numbers, essentially. But the idea here is that we can use independent sampling to allow us to understand a given distribution, whether that distribution be continuous or discrete in nature.